When is it acceptable to say this can't continue anymore? Dehydrated turd. You moron! That was rancid, pointless, tasteless, and a complete utter joke. You're a fucking shambles! I hate you. I hate you. I hate them. I hate you! When is it gonna end, Robbie? Well, here we are again. Here we are again. So soon for another Tyler Rowlinson rant about the sheer misery that is Charlton Athletic at the moment. Finished at the Valley today. Charlton Athletic nil, Wigan Athletic 2 in what was once again another clear example of how far behind this team is and how absolutely spineless and useless this is. <sighs> Going to need a couple of these to get through this tonight, that's for sure. So let's begin, as ever, by talking about the lineup. Nigel Atkins named two changes to the side that lost in midweek away at MK Dons. New signing Charlie Kirk was handed his debut today on the left-hand side in place of Connor Washington, who was thought to be out with a back injury, although he was fit enough to make the bench, which of course is great news as we want to have as less injuries as physically possible. And Ben Watson was handed a start today in place of Sean Clare, who also picked up a knock on Tuesday night. However, he was not fit enough to make the bench and was left out of the squad entirely. I didn't really complain that much. Obviously, I was a bit sceptical with Watson, obviously, due to last season's performances. However, I felt that we needed some... I guess you could say experience and maybe uh, hesitant to use the word stability, but I felt we could probably need someone like him in the middle of that park. And yeah, overall, in terms of the lineup, I didn't really have many complaints. I felt that it was the strongest that we had available to us on the day. And unfortunately, they didn't play like the strongest. The first half was, again, pretty uneventful, pretty lacklustre and uninspiring, to be honest with you. Another half of us not being able to create a decent amount of chances and really test their goalkeeper and if it wasn't for our keeper Craig McGillivray we could have been well out of that game way before the interval you know McGillivray today really showed why he was Portsmouth's player of the year last year and why people do call him the best keeper in the league because he was outstanding in that first half and if it wasn't for him we could have been about 4-0 down going into the break seriously Wigan looked like the only team that were likely to break the deadlock. They had one chance where they just absolutely breezed past Chris Gunter on that left-hand side. He barely even put a foot in. I don't even think he did put a foot in or just wanted to put a foot in, really. Just breezed past him, put in a cross, back post, completely free at the back post, free header, and rattled the crossbar. And it was just that sort of story for the rest of that half, really. Wigan had the better opportunities and they forced McGillivray into two fantastic saves from set pieces. Up the other end, we just struggled to really get anything going. There was like one patch around about like the 25th half hour mark where we actually looked all right and we were trying to get things working, particularly down that right side. Matthews and Dreisimu were linking up quite well in that first half and Dreisimu was taking on his men. But ultimately, again, we just couldn't really find like the end product in the box once again. Albie Morgan couldn't swing a cross in to save his life. I have no idea why we still have that guy on set pieces because his corners were awful. His crosses were terrible. There was that good spell, as I say, where we were trying to work things, but ultimately the first half ended goalless somehow. As I say, Wigan had some really good opportunities inside that first half and most definitely should have been in cruise control by that point. But as I say, McGillivray was just on form today and showed why he is one of the best keepers in this division and though he did finally prove his worth today and as I said we could have been about 4 or 5 nil down if it wasn't for him. Now in terms of the second half I'll be honest this is going to sound very strange but I think that for the majority of that second half that was the best that we played all season which ain't really saying an awful lot but hear me out I think we did look a lot better within that second half and we were working chances and I think that with the way that we were playing in that second half and the fans, you know, absolutely roaring their heads off. This was my first game back at the Valley since March 2020. So I was absolutely buzzing to be back at the game. And that atmosphere was so good. And I think that that partnered with the way that we were playing in that second half. I felt that the momentum was with us in that second half. And I felt that for the vast majority of that second half, we looked the better team. It's just, again, end products really let us down. And I felt that defensively in that second half, we were, you know, doing the job. We had two golden opportunities through Charlie Kirk and one through Jai Simi. I think there was one from Kirk where he got hold of the ball on the left-hand side, tried to, like, 
I guess he was looking for an option to pass to. In the end, had a shot on the left foot. It took a deflection and just dribbled past the post very close. And his second one, I think, was the best we had all game, where the ball ended up at Stockley's feet in the box. He had three Wigan players surrounding him, and he somehow managed to keep the ball, cross it in, and Kirk managed to get a flick onto it, darted into the area near the six-yard box, managed to get the lightest of flick onto it. And it, again, dribbled past the far post. And it was two very good opportunities. And Jai Simi had another good chance as well, where he cut inside. This was just before Kirk's second chance. Cut inside, had a shot on the left foot. And it flew past the far post. Three golden opportunities there. And again, just sort of proved our lack of end product. Then Jai Simi was subbed off and he was replaced by our latest signing, Corey Blackett-Taylor, who, of course, has joined the club on a four-month basis until January from uh, Tranmere after his uh, departure from the club. People were slating him and shitting on him and abusing him, even though he never actually kicked a ball. And I think the four-month contract gives him a chance to prove himself. You know, We need to back him. It's as simple as that. We've got to back the guy rather than belittle him and batter the signing because we're some massive football club, apparently, that shouldn't be signing players from Tranmere, which I think is embarrassing. The fact is, we need to back the guy and rather than slate him. Admittedly, he wasn't massively impressive, but it's his first game out of what? 20 plus that he's going to play for us in the period that he's here so rather than belittle the guy let's back him you know what I mean in the final 20 minutes we went positive you know we subbed George Dobson off we brought on Connor Washington so we reverted to a 4-4-2 we looked like looked like we were going for it but I think in that period when Washington came on we just gave up you know we just looked so lazy this happened for the vast majority of the game but we would lose possession of the ball and we just wouldn't show any effort to win it back. And we just wouldn't go towards the Wigan players and put the pressure on them. We weren't moving for one another when we had possession. And I think that that was evident more in the second half than it was in the first. Because, like I said, in the second half, in the opening stages, it looked like that we were the better side. And the momentum was with us because the fans were roaring and cheering those players on. And we just lacked the end product again. And then in the final 20 minutes, we just completely gave up. We just didn't look like we wanted the ball. And then in the 88th minute... Probably the inevitable happened, really. I felt that all game, even though the Innes and Fanboy were doing well in the air, you know, winning those headers, I felt that Wigan did find it very easy on a lot of occasions to cut us apart, especially on the fullback position, especially out wide. They felt we were finding it fairly easy to get through. And eventually they did, and they broke us, and they ended the game with that. In the 88th minute, I think it was a goal kick, didn't deal with it properly. It ended up on the right-hand side. They crossed it in, didn't stop the cross and didn't deal with it within the box. And there was Tendai de Riqua to put it in the back of the net in the 88th minute, send the away fans into delirium, celebrating with their players. And that was game, set and match. As soon as that goal went in, I was just like, yeah, that's it, done. Done. And that is when it all kicked off. That's when I heard fans like punching the end of the stands in their seats, kicking their seats, boos. And then the chants came out, you know, we're fucking shit, you're nothing special, we lose every week, you're not fit to wear the shirt, came back out. And I just didn't have the strength to do it this time because I just couldn't be asked. I couldn't believe what I was seeing again. You know, just another performance where we just didn't, you know, we just didn't show any end products, we didn't look like we wanted the ball. Most of those players didn't look like they gave a shit. And then ultimately in that patch, as soon as that goal went in, that was the killer. And they went on to get a second as well in the 95th minute. And of all players, it had to be James McLean. As soon as he come on that pitch and we started singing the England chants, I was thinking in my head quietly, didn't say it out loud, but I was thinking in my head, guarantee this prick scores. And look what happens. He goes down the other end, long ball in the 95th minute, gets put through. McGillivray comes out of his goal, goes straight past him, bang, goal, 2-0, game over. Walked out of the stadium at that point. We have been sold a pretty big false sense of hope going into this season. Because quite frankly, I don't think I've seen a team that is supposed to be fighting for promotion, that's supposed to blow the league out of the water this season, according to our owner, look so underprepared and uninspiring that this team is. Like I said in my previous video, I thought last season's team was bad, but Jesus fucking Christ, this team is awful. One point out of a possible 12 against four teams that we're supposed to be competing with this season. We've had four shots on target in those four matches combined throughout all of those games, four shots on target. We haven't scored from open play and we are on the worst run of form, the worst start to a season in the English third tier in our club's history. You tell me how I'm supposed to take a positive out of that. You tell me how I'm supposed to be positive. Tell me that I'm supposed to be patient. I have been patient. 
I've been patient with this club and our recruitment process, and I've backed our recruitment. I felt that it was good. Very clearly, it isn't. Our recruitment hasn't been good enough because we haven't done enough signings. We haven't brought enough players in. And like I said in my previous video, the vast majority of this team that we have is made up of players that failed to get us promoted this year. Today, and as a matter of fact, on Tuesday night, before those games... Those are the only two games I've watched this season. Before those two games, I thought, yeah, let's be patient. We'll get these players in. This team looks all right. After watching these two games, I understand the moaners and the negative fans. I'm now one of these fans because it's not good enough. It isn't fucking good enough. Standard. And we've got our owner, Thomas Sangard, who at this point in our club's history, I would never have thought that I'd be sitting here Talking to you guys, battering this guy. But I am, and I think it needs to happen. Put a tweet up at the end of the game saying, another disappointing loss in a very even game. Time to turn this around. The team needs our support. We are supporting the team. We're spending our hard-earned money supporting this team. Some people have been to all four games. I renewed my season ticket on Wednesday. £196 it cost me as a student ticket. And I want a refund already. <laughs> We are supporting the team. We are. And you can see that from today. The atmosphere was electric. Saying the fans need to support the team. We need to turn this around. The only way that this gets turned around is if you get your wallet out and fix it yourself. Like I said, I've never seen a team that is supposed to be fighting for promotion look so underprepared as this one. Adkins and Gallon saying, I'd have liked to have had our squad put together before pre-season. 21st of August, after we've just lost 2-0 to Wigan, we've signed seven players and we are still five or six quality players short. I didn't think I'd be sat here four games into a League One season, battering our owner and our manager and the system that we have. But I am, because it isn't good enough. If Sangard really wants success and he really wants to blow the league out of the water, he's got to get his money out and back the team and back the club and get us quality, quality players. Because I honestly look at that starting eleven and think that every single one of them in that team is replaceable. You've got Stockley up front in a 4-3-3 system that I've said time and time again doesn't work. And I feel sorry for him. Because we're just not giving him the support. He's winning these headers and no one can be fucked to, get, to latch onto it and get the ball. Kirk was impressive. I, I looked. I like him. I do like him. I think end product will come with him. He had two good chances today. I think he will be a threat. Jai Simi, again, looked good on the ball. Showed glimpses of his quality. But again, end product is a problem. Albie Morgan, don't know how he lasted the full 90. He was horrendous. He was absolutely horrendous today. Set pieces were terrible. Crosses were awful. Couldn't cross a ball to save his life. Lost possession far too many times and just looked like he couldn't be asked. He was playing in a more advanced role today. He was playing in like a number 10. At times, was actually level with Stockley, almost playing like a striker. But like I said, no idea how he lasted the full 90 because he was horrendous today. Worst player on the pitch by a mile. I'm entitled to my opinion and I think Dobson's decent. I think he's all right. I think he ran his socks off today, put in some good tackles. Was surprised to see him go off, but it was a positive change as we brought on a striker. This is saying something, but Ben Watson was one of the better performers on the team today. He was. He was. He was. I thought he was very good today, to be honest with you. Again, like Dobson, put in some tackles. Looked very good, to be fair. I don't know how we're four games into a season and we're still seeing Chris Gunter play on the left-hand side because the guy is absolutely horrific. Doesn't have a left foot and could not be fucked to stick a foot out and defend. Got skinned way too many times. Why is he still playing left back? Why have we not signed the left back yet? Why am I still watching him for this football club, let alone at left back? Innes and Framwo, as I say, were dominant in the air and for the most part did well until the final minutes. And if it wasn't for McGillivray, it would have been a cricket score. I look at that team. We need a backup goalkeeper. We need a left back badly. We need two midfielders, potentially a third, creative midfielder. A winger potentially is more cover and we badly... Badly need a striker that is different to what we have, that is different to Washington, Stockley, Davison. We need someone that can latch on to Stockley. We need someone to be a partner to Stockley. Davison, I think he's very similar to Stockley. So we need someone that is a little whippet like Washington to latch on to those players and get 20 goals. Is it going to be Schwartz? 
Who fucking knows? The guy is still training with the under 23s. Saying God saying we need to support the team. We are supporting the team. We are. Spending our money coming to watch utter shit. We're coming to watch a team that looks worse than last season. As things stand. And looks like it'll be lucky to finish mid-table. You're saying we need to turn things around. The only way this gets turned around is very fucking simple. Sangard gets his wallet out and backs the team. Spends money. Brings in five quality players. These players cannot be just any random fucker off the street that no one wants like last season. You need to start spending. Because this team, like I said in my previous video, if we finish the transfer window with this squad, we are fucked. We are done. Adkins, change the system. 4-3-3 doesn't work. Does not work. You need to start playing 4-4-2. That 4-3-3 system with Stockley isolated on his own doesn't work. And Adkins even said himself in the post-match interview, he said that we can't have Stockley up front on his own. Well, there you go. Change the system. Bring in a cam, at least, that will latch on to those balls. Or another striker, like I said. We are doing the very thing that Sangard is calling upon. And he's sat there saying that we're going to absolutely blow the league out of the water. We sold 9,000 season tickets because of it. And us fans have not been rewarded for it. So we've done our bit. We will continue to do our bit. As much as I'll complain, I'll still be there next week against Crew. You have no doubt about that. We're doing our bit. It's time you do your bit. You say it needs fixing, we'll fix it. Leading up to the Crew game this week, I'm expecting at least, at the very least, two to three bodies in the door. And it needs to happen, because if we go into the crew game with this team... I will have very little confidence. That's what I'm saying. I will have very, very little confidence. And that is all I've got to say, once again. That is all I've got to say. Thank you for watching another edition of Tyler Rowlinson's weekly rants about the fucking misery of the football club that I have the absolute pleasure and joy of supporting. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, turn on this post notification so you're notified of when I post. What do you guys think? Do you guys have the same opinion as me or do you think I'm a moaning little bastard? Let me know in the comments below. The way I see it though, we are miles behind where we want to be and we need to change the system. We need big players to come in the door and change this season. And even then it may even be too late, but we'll see what Sangard, Adkins, Gallon and everybody has up their sleeve going into this because this needs serious improvement. This next week, this next couple of days leading up to the 31st of August deadline day will be season defining. We're doing our bit. It's time they do theirs. Thanks for watching this video. This has been Tyler Ronitz and have a nice day and I'll see you later. Take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you next week with the game against Crew.